Hello, valued viewers. I hope you are all doing very well. The conventional reciprocating rod-driven steam locomotive proved less than ideal when operating in lumber service and other specialized industrial applications where poor track, steep grades, and low speeds were the norm. So several types of geared locomotives were developed specifically to provide high tractive effort and high adhesion when operating at slow speeds on poor track. These locomotives were driven by a crankshaft that powered the trucks by a network of gears and differed primarily in the arrangement of the pistons to the shaft. Geared locomotives could easily negotiate grades of up to 10% and would hold the rail on track that would have derailed any conventional locomotive. The first and most popular geared locomotive was designed by lumberman Ephraim Shea in 1878. Early Shays were built by the Lima Machine Works of Lima, Ohio, and they used two vertical cylinders on the engineer side to turn a horizontal crankshaft that powered two pivoting two-axle trucks at each end of the locomotive. The shaft turned the wheels using a network of gears. In 1885, Lima expanded this arrangement by using a three-cylinder engine to drive three two-axle trucks. More than 30 years after Lima entered the locomotive business by building Shays, it reorganized into, into the Lima Locomotive Works that we all know, and it became one of the leading manufacturers of mainline steam locomotives. Lima continued building Shays until 1945 when it delivered Western Maryland's number 6, the largest of the type ever built. In its most basic form, the Shea locomotive had a pair of two axle trucks, but was designed to facilitate the addition at the rear of more trucks driven in the same way. So the locomotive type started with a basic two truck, then you had a three truck, and then eventually a four truck. And Shays with the three truck were also the most common, and with limited numbers of even four trucks that were later available. Whether it came in a two truck, a three truck, or a four truck, the Shea locomotive had all of its wheels driven, was very flexible longitudinally, and provided a high degree of reliability and strength because of its structural and mechanical simplicity. It was therefore capable of hauling useful loads of applications such as logging, in which the Shea's ability to work successfully on highly uneven temporary tracks was also a major asset. And these same characteristics also made the Shea locomotive a natural for a railroad's revision very steep grades and curves of small radius. Over a period of 65 years from 1880, some 2,770 Shays were delivered, but sales fell off after 1920, and the last of the breed was completed in 1944. By this time, it should be noted, the emphasis of the Lima Locomotive Works had shifted from manufacture of the essentially small Shea locomotive to the design and construction of very large and very powerful steam locomotives of the conventional type. And thus, Lima entered a rivalry with the two giants of American steam locomotive industry, which was Baldwin and the American Locomotive Company. It should also be noted that the Shea locomotive incorporated a number of important features other than its basic layout, with varying numbers of flexible powered trucks. For instance, the boiler was short and of a considerable diameter in its center, and yet it was tapered sharply toward its front and rear in a fashion that ensured the minimum alteration in the boiler's water level at the firebox end. This was very true whether the locomotive was on very steep grades or level track. Basically, this meant that the Shays could work on 10% grades without any issues. Moreover, their longitudinal flexibility also meant that they could make their way around curves with a radius as small as 25 yards without danger of derailment. The Lima Locomotive Works promoted the saleability of the Shea locomotives by creating a full range of units available in any gauge and weights from as little as 50,000 pounds and up to 320,000 pounds and with grates suitable for burning of fuels as diverse as coal, oil, and waste wood from logging operations. And lastly, but certainly not the least, the Shea locomotives were very reliable and should they break were also easy to repair, even in the most primitive of maintenance and repair facilities. The Shays were optimized for heavy haulage under the most adverse of operating and geographical conditions, often made far worse by dire weather and elements. The Shea locomotive had the typical maximum speed of only 12 miles an hour, but their low cost, easy ma maintainability, and very modest speed has made surviving Shea locomotives a deal for operation of steam train services in a number of tourist locations.
So up until about the mid-1920s, the Shea handled the jobs that trucks, tractors, forklifts, and earth movers now handle today. And also, one might argue that the Shea's gearing was more like a truck than that of a steam locomotive. And while the Shea locomotive was the most common type of gear locomotive, there were two other major types that were built by the Climax Manufacturing Company of Cory, Pennsylvania, and they had built 1,100 total geared locomotives, and also the Heisler Company. There were several types. The most common had a pair of incline cylinders just after the smoke box driving a transfer shaft, which was geared to a central longitudinal drive shaft that in turn drove all the axles through skew bevel gears. And the Heisler Locomotive Works of Erie, Pennsylvania built more than 600 geared locomotives between 1891 and 1941. They had two cylinders arranged in a V under the boiler driving a central longitudinal shaft gear to the outer axle of each truck. Side rods connected the outer and inner axles. So to summarize the Shea locomotive, the strength of these engines lies in the fact that all wheels, including in some engines those under the tender, were driven that, so that all the weight develops tractive effort. A high ratio of piston strokes to wheel revolutions allowed them to run at partial slip, where a conventional rod engine would spin its drive wheels and burn rails, losing all traction. Also, Shea locomotives were known as sidewinders or stem winders for their side mounted drive shafts. Most were built for use, use in the United States, but many were exported to about 30 countries, either by Lima or that they had reached the end of their usefulness in the U.S. The Shea locomotives are among the most preserved locomotives today. Some 115 total examples of the Shea survive today. And there's a rather lengthy list of locations where people can see these locomotives. The two of most notable of which are the Cass Scenic Railroad State Park in West Virginia and the Sugar Pine Scenic Railroad located in Yosemite National Park in California. With that, the following specifications apply to the Shea 3 truck, Western Maryland 3354, the final Shea built. The manufacture date was May of 1945. It was a Class uh, C150 3. It had three trucks. The cylinders were three at 17 inches by 18 inches. The gear ratio was 2.45. The wheel diameter was 48 inches. Standard gauge. The boilers was 62.37. Uh, inches. Uh, the fuel type was coal. The boiler pressure was 200 psi. The tractive effort was 59,742 pounds. The factor of adhesion was 5.54. I've never seen another that high. Maximum safe speed was 23.3 miles an hour. Fuel capacity was 9 tons. The water capacity was 6,000 U.S. gallons. And the empty weight as built was 269,960 pounds. And this locomotive was renumbered to the number six by the Western Maryland Railroad. Okay, so we'll wrap up this video and I'll wrap it up by saying thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And also, if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as both features help the channel grow immensely. And turn on all of your notifications if you want to see all of my videos. I do one or two a day. And visit our print shop at nickelplatelimited at se.com if you want to support the channel in that way. And don't forget the super chats are all or the super thanks is also on. Thank you very much.